You could call it the struggle with the world. The central idea in this spiritual orientation is that there is a pathway of ascent leading through the transformation of the self and of society by which we can have, if not eternal life, then a greater life and increase our share in the attributes that we ascribe to divinity. This spiritual orientation has had two main expressions in the history of humanity. One expression lies in the Semitic salvation religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And the other, in the modern secular projects of liberation. The political projects of liberalism, socialism, and democracy. But also the personal romantic project of expression and construction of the individual in rebellion against the scripts that society and culture would impose on him. These beliefs, in both their religious and their secular forms, have set the whole world on fire. They are the most influential set of ideas in the world today. There is no set of beliefs that can rival them in their authority and effect. Nevertheless, this spiritual orientation to the world is now in a paradoxical situation. It is the most powerful set of ideas, and yet in another sense, it is weak. It is weak because its adepts no longer know what its next steps should be. And in this sense, the struggle with the world is lost and endangered. Throughout my life, as a thinker and as an activist, I have identified myself with this revolutionary orthodoxy of the West. I am a revolutionary by conviction as well as by temperament. But I recognize that this set of beliefs, which seems to me still to offer the best hope for humanity must be reinvented in order to be preserved. The law of the spirit is that we can maintain only what we renounce. We must reconstruct these ideas in order to renew their life. 